Hey guys, welcome to Sunday service. I hope all of you guys are doing well. I can't believe it's already a month since we got together uh, here at church to worship God. But always remember that we can still worship God anywhere and anytime. So let's all stand up uh, and we will have Teacher Michelle lead us into a time of praise. But before we do that, uh, I will pray for us and then we will go right into praise. After we sing one song, we will listen to a story from the Bible and then we will close with one song and I have a special treat for all of us today. We have a special message uh, from one of our teachers. Let's pray together and we'll begin. God, thank you so much for protecting us, for being a God who loves us, and for being a God who reminds us each and every day that you are God and that we are not. God, despite what's going on in the world, we thank you for giving us family, giving us shelter, giving us food, and ultimately giving us hope in your son, Jesus Christ. As we worship you today, help us to worship you um, wholeheartedly as if we are at church worshiping together with others because we know, Lord, that it is not the location that matters, but it's about our hearts. So I pray that you will help us to worship you with all of our hearts and we pray that you will be glorified and honored today. We love you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Teacher Michelle. Just like we sang this morning, I pray that all of us will remember that everything that we do, every move that we make, every breath uh, that we take, every step that we take, we will always remember that God is with us always. 
Today is the first Sunday of April, and it is also the Palm Sunday. It's the Sunday before Easter. Did you guys know next week is already Easter? The uh, Bible tells us that Palm Sunday, which is the Sunday before Easter, it's when Jesus returns to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. And when Jesus enters Jerusalem, there's many, many people waving the palm branches and welcoming Jesus as they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. As we focus on the character of Jesus during the month of April, our theme, the theme word that we want to focus on is the word humility. Can you repeat after me? Humility. Now, humility, uh, we can define it as putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Can we repeat that once more? Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve deserve. Now, why would anyone want to do that, right? This is the exact opposite of what the world tells us, isn't it? The world tells us that we should put ourselves first, that we should place ourselves in the center, and that we deserve more than what this world can off offer us. However, through the Bible, Jesus teaches us that the true way to life, the way to eternal life, is a life of humility. The way that God wants us to live is a life of humility in putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. And Jesus demonstrates that for us perfectly in the Bible as he gave up his own life to save sinners like us. So then let's go ahead and look at today's passage and how Jesus demonstrates for us what humility looks like. So if you have your Bibles with you, please bring your Bibles um, and open it up to Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 will only read verses 39 to 42. So if you don't have your Bibles, you can pause the video here and please go get your Bibles. We'll read together from Matthew chapter 26 verses 39 to 42. You guys ready? Verse 39, and going a little further... Jesus fell on his face and prayed, saying, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, who was one of his disciples, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, Jesus went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. This is God's word. Thanks be to God. Let me pray for us once more. God, I do ask and pray that as we look into the uh, book of Matthew, Help us to learn from Jesus. Help us to learn about humility through the story of Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. We thank you. We love you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, today's story takes place in the Garden of Gethsemane. Can we, everyone say that? Garden of Gethsemane. This was just before Jesus is betrayed and ultimately arrested to be killed on the cross. And all throughout Jesus' life, he was mostly a very popular person. He was popular amongst the crowd. Many really liked his teachings. Many liked all the different cool miracles that he performed. And some even dropped everything to follow him. And Bible calls these people disciples. However, there was one group in particular who didn't like Jesus very much. It was the Jewish religious leaders. The Jewish religious leaders. They didn't like Jesus because Jesus was reminding them how sinful they were. How they were not living the life that God wanted them to live. How they were living a life that was not pleasing to God. Jesus told them things like they were selfish, they were prideful, they were blind teachers leading other people. Jesus even called them a snake. Because all they cared about was themselves more than others. They would put it, they would place themselves above others and even above God. And because of this, these leaders wanted to get rid of Jesus. 
They wanted to kill Jesus. So they got together and they thought of an idea. They um, tricked or they persuaded one of the disciples named Judas. And they agreed on a deal for Judas to ultimately betray Jesus and hand him over to the leaders for 30 pieces of silver. Now, we don't usually use silver as money these days, but back in the day, that was a lot of money. So Judas and the Jewish religious leaders thought they were being sneaky. They were planning all along to arrest and to ultimately kill Jesus. But Jesus knew all about their plan. This is why Jesus said during the last dinner together with all of his disciples that one of you would end up betraying me. However, Jesus didn't call Judas out and stop this. Jesus didn't stop Judas because Jesus knew that all of this, even the part of betray being betrayed and being arrested and being killed on the cross, was part of God's plan. All of this was part of God's plan. So on the night that Jesus was about to be betrayed and arrested, Jesus takes his disciples, minus Judas, of course, because he was uh, getting all the Jewish religious leaders and the guards to come and arrest Jesus. But all the other disciples, Jesus took to the Garden of Gethsemane. Now, they didn't go to the garden to go look at flowers, but instead, they went to pray. We see that Jesus instructed his disciples to stay awake and pray. Now, how many of you guys try to pray before you go to bed? Now, how many of you guys tried um, to pray and you eventually fell asleep? I remember there were so many times, especially at night, when I tried to read the Bible or when I tried to pray, and I actually ended up falling asleep. It is really difficult to pray at night. But Jesus takes his disciples at night to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. We see that Jesus instructed his disciples not to fall asleep, but to stay awake and pray. And then Jesus, going a little further, alone by himself, goes and prays on his own. And this is what Jesus prays. That's what we read today in verse 39. This is what Jesus prays. Look with me in verse 39. Jesus says, My Father, if it be possible, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed and he was going to be arrested. Jesus also knew that he must die so that others may live. Although Jesus knew that he had to go to the cross and that he had to die, it was not easy for Jesus. Right? When was it easy for anybody to die? This is why Jesus prayed to God. And Jesus prayed to God and asked if there was any other way. That's what Jesus meant when he said, My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. God, is there another way? Is it possible for me not to die on the cross? We see that Jesus prayed the same prayer as he wrestled with God. Not once, not twice, but three times. But what's amazing, what's incredible is how Jesus, as he continued to pray, we see him declaring at the end, Not as I will, but as you will. Not my will, but God, may your will be done. Friends, this shows that no matter what, no matter how difficult, no matter how hard of a decision it was, Jesus was willing to obey God until the end. Jesus was able to obey God until the end. And Jesus prayed and asked God for His will to be done. Friends, in today's story, we see a contrast between two groups. We see Jesus who prays earnestly, crying out to God three times. And then, while Jesus was praying, we see His disciples who struggled to pray because they were falling asleep. So what is God trying to teach us through today's story regarding humility? What's today's story got to do with humility? Friends, I believe the secret to humility is in prayer. The secret to humility is in prayer. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. So as we pray, we realize that life is not about me, me, and me, but it's about God. 
As we pray, God reminds us of our purpose, why He created us. He created us to love Him and to love His people. But when we don't pray, we make life about me. We make life about us. We put ourselves above everything else, even God Himself. When we don't pray, we want God to obey our commands. We want God to do things for us. And we treat often, we treat God as a vending machine. Right? We treat God as a genie. God, I want you to do this for me. God, I want you to uh, buy me a lot of candy. God, I want you to uh, help me to get really good grades on my quizzes and my tests. And when God doesn't give us everything that we want, we blame Him. We blame Him for it. Friends, this is why we need to pray. We see through the perfect example of Jesus. All throughout His life, Jesus was sinless. And He obeyed God all the time. And He was praying to God all the time. He didn't deserve to be betrayed. He didn't deserve to be arrested. He didn't deserve to be beaten, to be mocked, and to ultimately be killed on the cross. But Jesus knew that all of this was part of God's plan. That all of this was part of God's will. And that was the only way for God to rescue people from their sins. Jesus also knew that this wasn't going to be easy. That's why Jesus prayed. As Jesus prayed and talked to God, it gave Him power. It gave Him courage to overcome all obstacles. And as Jesus prayed and talked with God, it gave Jesus humility. It gave Jesus humility to place God above Himself. It gave Jesus humility to place God's plan above everything else. So then what's this got to do with us? What does this mean for me? Friends, praying helps us put God first. Can you repeat after me? Praying helps us put God first. You cannot be humble if you pray. If anyone says, oh, I am so humble, and they don't pray, they're not humble. You cannot be humble if you don't pray. Friend, during this time of crisis, during this time of hardship with the coronavirus, I believe God is calling all of us to pray. Not just our parents, not only the adults, but I believe God is calling even us to pray. Maybe some of us are anxious. Maybe some of us don't really have any idea what's going on. Maybe some of us are worried. Maybe some of us are afraid. Wherever we are, we can pray. Let's pray and ask God to remind us that He is in control of everything. And we can find peace and comfort, not in ourselves, not in anyone else, but in God. Praying and talking with God helps us to see that we need to put God first before ourselves. And praying and talking with God helps us to obey His will and to see everything the way He sees rather than wanting to obey our will, rather than wanting to see only the things that we want to see. When we pray to God, we place God first before anyone else and before everything else. Praying helps us put God first. Praying helps us to put God first. So let's do that today. Let's do that right now. Can we all pray together? Let's close our eyes, put our hands together, and uh, I want you to repeat after me. God, thank you so much. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for reminding me that prayer helps us to be humble. Prayer helps us to put God first above all. God, I pray for the world. We know that the world is suffering. There are many people afraid, anxious, and worried. God, we pray that you would remind us that you are in control, that you are God, and we are not. Help us to humble ourselves, to control only what we can control. We cannot control the circumstances, but we can control our attitudes. Help us to look to you, 
to find rest, to find peace, and to find comfort. We thank you. We love you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, I know that on Sundays, right after the sermon, we often have a time of offering, but we cannot do that at this time. So can we quickly pray? Can we quickly pray as we do every Sunday? I give my life as an offering to you. I want all of us to verbally pray. And maybe some of us don't really have money, but we can still offer up ourselves and we can start training right now to see offering, not as giving money to God, but as devoting ourselves to God. So can we all close our eyes? Let's pray together as we give our offerings, saying, God, I give my life as an offering to you. Amen. Amen. All right, let's all stand up. And Teacher Michelle, won't you lead us into a time of closing praise? To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise Thank you so much, Teacher Michelle, for leading us. At this time, let's close together uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever. Amen. Uh, very quickly for announcements, as I did mention, we have a special treat. Uh, one of the teachers uh, have volunteered uh, to give a quick message uh, for us all. So let's tune in and listen. And afterwards, uh, we'll see you guys next Sunday. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday, and we have a lot of things prepared for you. I know that we can't do the Easter egg hunt, and we won't be able to all get together and worship God together at our church. But we can still celebrate Easter or Resurrection Sunday all together with our families. So I will uh, give all the information there needs to be with your, to your parents so they can prepare. And I will see you guys next Sunday for Easter. Bye. Hi, everyone. So nice to be able to talk to you guys, even though we aren't able to see each other face to face. Um, it's been such a long time since we've been together and I think this time away has made me really grateful for the time that I get to worship with you guys on Sunday. Um, and you know, I think 
it's a really strange time right now with so many things going on and um, throughout all of this a lot of the focus has been on adults who aren't able to work or older people who might be at risk for getting sick but I've come to realize that kids lives your lives have been really impacted too um, some of you might be enjoying time off from school, some of you might be missing your friends, but overall a lot has changed for you guys uh, in a really short amount of time and it can get scary. Um, luckily you guys have awesome parents uh, to care for you right now, but I wanted to share um, a Bible verse that I think can be a really great reminder um, for all of us. It comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 to 4 and it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So I just wanted to check in and say hello and also share that encouraging uh, verse. And I hope you are all doing well. And I can't wait for all of us, uh, all of this to be over, so I can give you guys hugs if it's safe to do that. Uh, but in the meantime, feel free to text me, call me, Facetime me, um, and I love you guys. <laughs>